Hi everyone, my name's Adam. In this problem, we're going to be finding the general solution to the first order linear differential equation y prime plus 2xy equals to 10x for x greater than 0. So before we get started, let's start with what we know. What's the general form of a first order linear differential equation? It's something that looks like y prime plus p of x times y equals to q of x, where p of x and q of x are some continuous functions of x. And we know, or as seen in our section, that the general solution to this can be written as, or found through, y times e raised to the integral of p of x dx, and that's equal to the integral of q of x times e to the integral of p of x dx and dx downstairs, and plus some general integration constant c. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay. So coming over to our problem, first taking a look at the general form of a first order linear differential equation. And what we have here, we can see that y prime plus 2x times y, we see that our px is equal to 2x. And on the right hand side, this is equal to 10x, where that's going to be our function, say q of x. Okay? So first what we need, looking at our general solution, is we want to develop the left hand side. So y times e raised to the integral of px times dx. So we'll start there. So we want to find e raised to the integral of this p of x times dx. All right, so how can we do that? Well, you can do this one of two ways. You could throw everything together and do it that way if you feel comfortable with. But if you want to, you can just find the integral first and then put that on top as an exponent. That's how we'll get started here. First, we'll find the integral of p of x dx. All right, so the integral of our px dx is equal to integral of what is p of x, 2x dx. Okay? And so, 2 being constant, antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. 2 times 1 half is just 1, so we're left with just x squared. Now, there's an important point to note, which in your section is touched on lightly, but we're going to talk about a little bit more here to make this clear. When we take this antiderivative, Right, that's in the exponent position of e, we're not going to add on our general constant c. We can. In the end, it will just end up canceling out. But to save ourselves some time, we'll just leave it as x squared. Now, to see where that comes from and or where it goes, if we look at our general solution and just pay attention to this integral, okay? so we found our integral of p of x to be x squared. But let's look here. In general, Let's suppose we take that integral and we get some function would be e to the, let's call it f of x, is our antiderivative plus some constant c. Well, over here on this right-hand side, when we compute this integral, we'd get the same thing. We'd have e, some integral, say f of x, plus some general constant c. Well, from algebra, this can be rewritten as e to the f of x times e to the c. And this would be the same, e to the f of x times e to the c. So what is e to the c? That's just a constant. It can get canceled out on both sides of the equation. So that's why we're not going to add the plus c or any other constant over here. We'll just leave it as is, because in the end it would just cancel out anyway. So we'll proceed from here. So we have our integral again of p of x dx is x squared. So that's going to give us the, say, left-hand side of our general solution will have y times e to the x squared is equal to the right-hand side, the integral of q of x, which is 10x, times, again, e to the x squared dx. Okay? And we'll add on our constant once we're done taking the integral. OK, so what do we have? y times e to the x squared is equal to the integral of 10x times e to the x squared dx. So to continue <clears throat> solving this, 
we're going to take this antiderivative, and if we look at this 10x times e to the x squared, we see we can use a u substitution. So we'll start computing the integral on our right hand side. We'll let u be equal to x squared. So we take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So we get du dx is equal to 2x. And of course, we can simplify this a couple of different ways. What I'm going to do is bring all of the x terms to one side and constants to the other. So this will give us du divided by 2 equals x dx. Right? So seeing up in our integral, our x dx term will go out for du, and we'll have 1 half, or dividing by 2, out in front. Well, let's go ahead and put that down. So again, the right-hand side is going to be equal to, we'll bring the constants out. We have 10 over 2 times the integral e to the u, since u is our x squared, and x dx become du. And of course, that is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. Antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. And now we'll add on our general constant c. OK, so let's put this together and continue to simplify. So what we have in the left hand side, y times e to the x squared is equal to 5 times e to the x squared. We're resubstituting our u for x squared and plus our general constant c. So what we want to find is the general solution. Now, keep in mind, this is just this formula, one form of the general solution. We are going to solve this explicitly in terms of y. So we're going to take our y to get it by itself and divide through by this term e to the x squared. And dividing all the way through, divide by e to the x squared, and divide by e to the x squared. So our e to the x squared on the left Obviously, you're going to cancel, so we have y is equal to, and our e to the x squareds will cancel on our right. So this is y equal to 5 plus c divided by e to the x squared. Or we can write it as c times e, bring it upstairs as a negative exponent, e to the negative x squared. And that is going to be the solution to our first order differential equation. Thank you very much.